Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for checking in to another Blessed Money where we help you understand Bible scriptures and build your relationship with Christ by sharing real world blessings and testimonies on certain scriptures and how they manifested in our personal lives. And this week, we're going to be talking about the difference between righteousness and self righteousness. So stay tuned. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus. We thank you for another opportunity for us to come together to hear and share your word. We ask that you open our ears, our hearts, and our minds so that we hear the truth, we know the truth, and that we understand the truth. And anything that may not be the truth, we ask that it go in one ear and not the other. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, Genesis 15 verse 6 is a very short scripture. So, I'm going to have to give you a little context to get you up to speed to know what's going on in this, in this particular chapter. First off, I'm sure most of y'all already heard of Abram, or also known as Abraham, our father Abraham. And in Genesis 15, God came to Abraham and, in a vision, and he told him that he's going to give him these great rewards. You see, Abraham was kind of jaded at the time, kind of a little, maybe a little depressed or whatever, maybe even a little skeptical because he felt like, well, what could you possibly give me, God? Because anything that you can give me, I'm not going to have an heir to give it to. See, Abraham was starting to get a little older and he had not had a son yet. And so anything that God was going to give him would have just simply went to one of his servants. But God made a promise to him that day. God told him that he is not only going to have an heir, but he is going to father many nations, as many stars are in the sky. And so that's why we kind of know him as Father Abraham. But the interesting thing about this story is God counted him as righteous simply because he believed the promise God gave him. And what's more interesting is that Abraham was a flawed man. See, a lot of people may not realize it. But man, this man's story was like the old school Jerry Springer. So first off, he had a fine wife. And so when he was going to Egypt, he was afraid that Pharaoh would kill him and try to take his wife. So he told him that it was his sister. And he allowed his wife to go live with Pharaoh. This got him rich and wealthy and the whole nine. And then they end up calling a curse on Pharaoh because he lied and said that his wife was his sister. So Pharaoh basically gave him gave him his wife back. Another thing, his wife, she, she um, after God made this promise, she started to get a little worried because they started to got they started to get past their childbearing age, and so she started not trusting God, which a lot of us do. God will make a promise to us, and then we'll try to start doing it on our own will. I'll be honest, I was kind of guilty of it with with uh, blessed them on it. But we go out and try to do it on our own. And what she told him to do is go sleep with the servant and make a baby. And so he went and did that. That caused all kind of drama in their life. And then, lo and behold, God fulfilled his promise and they had a child. And so now that caused some issues between who the rightful heir and it made the wife a little jealous. But the bottom line is this. God can use anybody. And he counted Abraham as righteous simply because he believed and he had faith. And me personally, I think that's like a, a preview of what Jesus was going to do for us. God count us righteous through Jesus Christ. And so what does that say about the kind of God we have? How do you feel about that? To know that he can take somebody as jacked up as Abram, Abraham and father many nations. And not just, and Christians are not the only ones who believe in Abraham. Muslims also believe in him. There's other few religions that believe that Abraham fathered us as well, that we're descendants of Abraham as well. And so, uh, regardless of what your belief is, that just shows our God can use anybody. And if you have faith in him and you answer that call, he will count you as righteous. And through Christ, we're counted as righteous. So, this leads me to my blessed testimony. So this particular testimony, um, it happened when I was in a small group. We were actually talking about Abram, and we were talking about how God counted him righteous. And one of the girls in my group, in my small group, was a little confused on the difference between righteous and self-righteous. She was like, I always thought righteous was a bad thing. It's kind of like somebody was stuck up or thought they were better than you or whatever the case may be. And she was confusing it with self-righteous. So righteous, righteousness is basically being right or good in the eyes of God. Self-righteousness is basically making yourself righteous 
over somebody else saying that your ways and your beliefs are better than somebody else's. You're typically judging somebody else. You're typically acting like your crap don't stink, basically. And that's basically, that's what self-righteous, self-righteousness is. And so she was confusing the two. And when, as she started explaining it, I realized that I used to feel the same way. It was one of the reasons why I didn't want to go to church. I had a lot of Christians telling me that, you know, if you don't do this or if you do that, you're going to go to hell. And then I felt like they seemed like they had it together, but I didn't have my crap together. And I felt like that no matter what I did, I was going on my way to hell because there was no way I could fulfill all these laws and commandments and everything. And it seemed like all the Christians around me had it together and they were quick to tell me where I was failing or falling short, knowing good and well that they had some areas of their own. And so that's why I think it's important for us as Christians to show love to people, let people come as they are, give them the gospel, give them the word, share your blessings with them. And then as they become to know Christ, God will count them as righteous. And once they have a relationship with Christ, the things they used to do, they won't want to do it no more. You know, that's how you get away. That's how you start living a life for Christ. That's how you start living a righteous life. But first, you just got to kind of know who Christ is. Realize that you need him. Realize what he's done for you. And that'll help help you realize that you are, are, that you are a righteous person. Um, and so, if you don't, if you, if you don't do that, if you don't believe, then that's also your choice. That's a choice that God gives us. He gives us the opportunity to believe and not believe. And so, um, as Christians, we got to remember not to be so judgmental on people. We got to allow people to come in as they are, whether they're coming in smell like marijuana or they're coming in with uh, their, club, their clothes on from the club last night or they're coming in with the boyfriend or girlfriend that they're living with and they're not married to. Let them come in. Let God touch their heart. God will start to speak to them. The Holy Spirit will start to fill them and they'll be convicted on things they do. It's not our place to, to judge somebody. It's our place to tell them what's right and wrong. Tell them what the Bible say, but we can do it with love. We can point it to them with, in kindness and we can do it without making them, without making ourselves feel righteous or self-righteous, excuse me. And a great example of this is how us as Christians treat homosexuals. Homosexual, the Bible makes it clear that it's a sin, but so is lust. So is lusting after another woman as a man. So is lying. So is judging people. So is being self-righteous. I mean, Jesus went extra hard on the fair on, on the uh, Pharisees because of their self-righteousness, because of these high laws and standards they were placing on other people and they weren't even holding their self. And so, you know, uh, if you want to read the Bible and see when, when Jesus really got angry and he really called somebody out, most of the time it was somebody being self-righteous. So I, I, I plead to my Christian brothers and sisters to don't be so self-righteous. If somebody give their life to Christ and they believe what he did, God counts them as righteous. And thank God that God counts us as righteous because if it's up to us as humans, we, our human nature, we can't help but to judge somebody. Somebody doing so wrong or did wrong to us, we can't help but to um, judge them harshly. And it's hard to see how God can use somebody. I keep hearing this thing about how you read this Bible from King James and King James was a homosexual. So what? He didn't write the Bible, he translated it. And that just goes to show that God can use anybody. And I'm grateful for that. Because that means he can use somebody like me. So we got to stop doing that, guys. We got to stop being self-righteous. We got to know that God, that God can transform anybody. But you're going to push them away if you constantly judge them. You're going to push them away if you constantly tell them how they're failing and how they're doing wrong. You can't do that kind of stuff. All right? So please check out the actual blog. Uh, I go into more details, get some more scriptures, give you an opportunity to share your blessed money as well. But also, if you found any uh, value in this video, then hit the uh, thumbs up button and leave a comment. If you didn't find any value, leave a comment. Let's have a respectful discussion. If I hit, if I messed up, I can admit that I messed up on something. I'm not perfect. You know, I am just answering the call that God has called for me to do, and that's to share 
my blessed testimony, share my testimony, share my blessings, share my experiences so somebody else can come to know Christ. And I'm so grateful for my small group that we can have these type of discussions without people feeling um, judged or feeling abused or feeling neglected or feeling whatever. And then we can get some serious answers. And so there is a difference between when God counts you as righteous and then you counting yourself as righteous. And you uh, not seeing the sin that you have and placing it all on other people. Be careful with that. That's a sneaky way the devil can get you to fall into sin and you may be thinking you fallen in Christ. So again, just show love to each other. Show love to your brothers and we will fulfill the commandments. Until next time, I'm Rico checking out.